Orinoco. The Drive on your local radio station. We are ESPN Blacksburg. And a good Monday afternoon to all of you. My name is Paul Van Wagner. Brian C. Reed is in the other studio taking your calls at 866-961-1430. 866-961-1430 is the number to call. You can also text us. The AA Automatic Transmission text line is open and ready to serve you. That number is also 866-961-1430. Andrew's here with us today. Doing all right? I'm doing all right, and Paul. How are you? I am well. Well, Tim Thomas from Tech Lunch Pail is here, and of course, it is time. Hands to myself. <laughs> no matter how hard I'm trying to. Scott Nason. I won't Scott. Fall to myself. Scott. 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 Scott Nason. Scott. <laughs> Brian, you'd love this. Scott Nason. Scott. Scott Nason. <laughs> Scott Nason. Scott Nason. Absolutely. Let's go. Scott Nason joining us today. How are you, my friend? Doing wonderful, Paul. I like the added sound effect in the opening uh, <laughs> monologue, I should say, song. And uh, ready, ready to talk some World Cup with a crazy uh, last few minutes here in the World Cup. You you should have heard these two across from me. They're they're all over here breaking things down. I, meantime, I'm just trying to find my Gatorade. That's all. <laughs> We know you, Paul. That's good stuff right there. I just can't. I don't know, man. I can't get into it. I can't you get know, into it. Just watch the game. I, I can't. I can't I mean, stay what away. Are you, you going to watch wa- the knockout round at least? No. What else are you going to watch at 10 in the morning? Um, Jerry Springer? Rory Povich? <laughs> is that stuff still on? I don't Brian? Jerry Springer is great. <laughs> yeah. yeah like Paul, I thought of Rory Povich as well. <laughs> <laughs> See? See? There you go. There you go. We do have some intrigue, though, Scott, in uh, in the World Cup. Uh, Group B specifically, uh, Spain-Portugal come down to the, uh, I believe it's the second tiebreaker. Uh, they tie in points. They tie in goal differential. Spain has six goals to Portugal's five. It looks like Spain is going to get Russia in the first round of 16. Yeah, it was quite the crazy ending there and extra time to both those matches. When the play began today, you knew the four teams who were going to be in out of groups A and B had Uruguay and Russia in, and Uruguay beats Russia 3 to nothing, which uh, a little bit of a surprise on the margin of victory. And so Uruguay gets the number one spot, Russia gets number two in group A. So you have Spain and Portugal tied on points, playing Morocco, who was eliminated, and Iran, who still mathematically had a chance with the win, and both those games end in 2-2 draws. I, I didn't have a chance to see it. I was just coming back from work, and I was following it as, as best I could. It sounds like there was the uh, video assistant referee that was involved in one of those matches. It sounds like there was a penalty kick involved in another one. And it's a really big tiebreaker and result for Spain. Not only do I think they avoid a better team in Uruguay, but potentially, and this is very potential, but if, if the brackets kind of hold up or the groups hold up, as many people expect they will going into the third round of matches, Spain potentially could be on the side of the bracket with no World Cup winners. Oh. You could have on one side right now Germany playing Brazil in the round of 16. Mm-hmm. You could have Argentina and France playing each other in the round of 16. Again, a lot has to work out, and this World Cup has definitely not been one as has been drawn to form, if you will. But uh, it was a big result for Spain. I think that's going to carry them well into this tournament. You mentioned Germany uh, after a horrendous opening game. They bounce back, uh, pick up a victory. Still have some work to do. Sweden's right there with them. Germany's going to have to probably win their last match in order to secure themselves a spot. They could potentially draw, but that would be a major upset if Germany did not make it into the round of 16. And they weren't too far away from being eliminated on Saturday. And, you know, you, you look at that match, Sweden gets the early goal. They're up 2-1. to one. Germany goes down a man. They're playing one man short. And they get a foul at the 95th minute. And any time you give up a free kick late in a, in a match, usually bad things happen. And, you know, you just hear the rest of the teams in the tournament just going, oh, we had them. They mm-hmm. were out. They were mm-hmm. dead. 
Now they have new life, and I'll tell you, watch out for Germany. They likely will get in. There's a potential Mexico is not through yet, despite winning right. their two matches. There's a potential of a three-way tie in Group F with Mexico, Germany, and Sweden. You would expect Germany to beat Korea. Then you have Mexico and Sweden. If Sweden beats Mexico, then you have a three-way tie. Mexico is still in good shape because they're plus two on the goal differential, while Sweden and Germany are zero. But look for Germany really to run up that score against Korea. I think they get through with the win and watch out for Germany because they were almost dead, but now they have new life and they're a good, very good team. Uruguay and Croatia, neither of them have given up a goal. I realize that Croatia still has one more game to play. How big is that for a team, Scott, to go through the the round-robin phase without giving up a goal and going into that round of 16? Well, I mean, that is big. One, it's showing that you're playing a very good system as far as, obviously, with your defense, your keeper. Maybe he's not getting a whole lot of shots like Uruguay's keeper, but Croatia, you look at that team. That was one of my surprises. Them and Serbia. Serbia, it'll be a little bit of trouble now to advance, but Croatia right now is just looking very good. They should top Group D. They have six points. They have one match left against Iceland, and, you know, I would not sleep on Croatia. They could be paired in 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 a tough region moving forward, but they're looking as good as anybody in this tournament right now. Tough to sleep in Croatia with all that bombing going on. Tim, what you got? Yeah, Scott, um, look. <laughs> wow. Go ahead, no, no, the go Yugoslavia oh, reference. The oh, Yugoslavia oh, reference. Stop. We're crying wow. out. It's a joke. Relax. Wow. Woo. I need a safe space. <laughs> it's over there on the couch. Wow. Go sit down. Woo. You'll be fine. Um, Scott, looking ahead, obviously, that Group D Croatia is obviously through to knockout round looking fantastic, but Messi and Argentina are in some serious trouble. Third in that group with Iceland right now, with Niger- playing Nigeria, who all they have to do pretty much is just, just keep Argentina off the scoreboard and get through. What do you think about the chances of Messi and Argentina looking ahead at a group at this point that it's hard for them to see them advancing? You know it is, but for some reason I just think they get it done somehow. Iceland worries me a little bit. And Gareth, that match is important to Argentina because they are tied with Iceland with one point. They're going to take on Croatia. Croatia hasn't locked up first, but a draw would get them through. A little worried about Iceland. They did not play well in their match against Nigeria. They really didn't play that well in their match against Argentina. And, again, you're just waiting. You think at some point, at some point, Messi's got to get it going, doesn't he? I mean, at some point, something has to break. Nigeria, they're a fun team to watch. They're the best uniforms in the whole World Cup, hands down. But I just, I still think Argentina finds a way. They scrape in to at least that second spot. And you're seeing those South American teams starting slowly. You saw Colombia lose their first match. They looked good yesterday against Poland. You see Uruguay, they've looked good. Brazil, they're going to get it going. I think Argentina is in that group. I hope I'm wrong because I kind of like to see them not get through, but I still think somehow they get in. I'm a big fan of Panama, Scott. What's the chances of them getting in the wild card round? Well, they did get into the World Cup uh, over the United States, and uh, thankfully they scored a goal in that England drought. Oh, I mean, they're goodness. drubbing, I should say. Not a drought. Panama had a drought until that goal in the second half. Uh, Panama, happy to be there. Thanks for playing. See you later. I've made the argument before. I'm going to make the argument again. I, I realize that Panama earned their way in, but wouldn't we be better off? And I'm not just talking about the United States. Pick pick one of the other squads that didn't make it. Wouldn't we be better off in the World Cup to have some other team better than Panama, better than Poland, better than Costa Rica in this thing to make it more competitive? No, I don't think yeah. so at all, Paul. I like how this system is right now. Again, this is the World Cup. If you did that, you would probably have quite a few more European teams, and we have enough European teams. I believe there's 11 or 12 in this year's tournament, and there are some European countries like the Netherlands and Italy, which I'm sure would beat each of those opponents uh, probably rather easily. Mm-hmm. But that's the intrigue of the World Cup is you get in, you qualify, you start qualifying in some cases three years before the World Cup even begins, and it's a tough sludge through the qualifying round, and you should be rewarded despite your group not or your region maybe not being the strongest. I still think they deserve to be there even if they don't perform very well. Yeah, and to add something else to Scott's point as well, Costa Rica in 2014 got mm-hmm. to the, the quarterfinals of the World Cup. Poland was expected to... Um, Get through, get through out of their group. They've been a shocking disappointment. 
Panama is just, we kind of knew this would be coming, but I mean, they have to give, they, they deserve to be there more than the U.S. does. I mean, if the U.S. to not get it done in Trinidad and Tobago. Both of them. I mean, sorry, you don't deserve to be there if you can't get it done in Trinidad and Tobago, Panama. Or Tobago, depending yeah, whatever, on where you're whatever from. Whatever it is, Panama gets their chance. They get to have their World Cup moment, maybe, against Tunisia. Both of those countries get to have it. And then they get to go home, and we'll be going to the knockout rounds. All right, so Group C and D tomorrow. Scott, uh, what should we expect out of those four matchups? Because they will play all four tomorrow. Yeah, they will. I mean, you, you start with Group C, Denmark and France. France already through. Denmark still has a chance to get through in that one. Uh, Denmark with four, so they would just need a draw on that one. So I wouldn't expect much out of that match. I always like to uh, you know, do my strategy, if you will, is those two teams maybe will have a gentleman's agreement before the match that, hey, you know what, guys? We both can make it on a tie. Let's go up there and kick the ball around for 90 minutes. You shouldn't do that. I'm not saying they're going to do that, but maybe don't be surprised if they do. And then you have the Group D1 there that's really interesting. Croatia in with six points. You have Nigeria taking on Iceland, and Iceland win, and they probably will be in. But Argentina has to play Croatia. They win. They probably are in. Nigeria with a tie. They could get in. So really lots to play out in Group D. And uh, it's going to be interesting. Some good matches tomorrow, no doubt. If Argentina loses, should we just play Madonna on a loop? I think so. And uh, I think you're going to see heads rolling after that one. As Argentina had very high expectations this tournament. Hey, all you got to do is advance and get out of the, the group stage. They still have a shot to do so. Good or bad, is that the big surprise so far of the World Cup? Is, is the, the performance or lack thereof of Argentina? I would say that, and uh, and Ryan mentioned Poland. Poland's very disappointing there. Uh, Lewandowski, again, a player that's very good in, uh, in, in his uh, club, but maybe not so much for country. Poland's been a huge disappointment along with I think Costa Rica. I guess I expected a little bit out of Costa Rica, maybe at least getting a goal or some points, and they don't have that. And But, yeah, Argentina right now is the headline as far as disappointment, and if they don't get in, that will be the most disappointing team, bar none, in the World Cup. What about what about the performance of your English team, Scott Nason? Well, you know, we'll see how they do against Belgium. A very nice match against Panama. I mean, that one could have been probably 12-1 to if England didn't maybe let their foot off the gas. You always kind of hold your breath with England. They do usually do very well in the group stage. I think they've advanced all but once over the last six or seven World Cups they've been in. But then it gets to the knockout stages, and that is where they have trouble, especially if and when it gets down to penalty kicks. They are not clutch when it comes to penalty kick and kicks. Rather, and you saw a couple that they performed very well yesterday. When the pressure's on, we'll see how they do. But right now. They're playing as good as anybody. When do we get to the knockout round? When does that begin? The knockout round will begin on Saturday with Uruguay taking on Portugal. That one we know, and I believe the other one is Spain taking on Russia. I believe that's the 10 a.m. game, and then Uruguay-Portugal at 2. No, excuse me, Spain is on Sunday. So it will be probably Group C, Group D match on Saturday. Two Saturday, two Sunday, two Monday, two Tuesday. Then you have the semifinals Friday, July 6th, and then you have the final on, or the quarterfinals, excuse me. Finals not until July 15th. So I'm getting ahead of myself, but hey, Paul, it's the World Cup. How can I not? Brian, we got to keep doing this right through July. Amen. Oh, boy. Mid-July. Scott Nason, where can our listeners hear more from you? We're going to talk more about this, uh, the NBA draft, the NHL draft, and the world of sports on my show, The Game Sports Show, which you can find. Two places, the website, thegamesportshow.com, or thegamesportshow.podbean.com. Uh, I want one of those T-shirts, by the way. I'll, I'll, I'll work on getting you one, Paul. I know you're down to, I believe, a large right now, so we'll, we'll, we'll get that shipped out. Extra medium. Very good. Scott, as always, <laughs> my friend, thank you so much for doing this. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. There you go. Scott Nason giving us a little World Cup coverage. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, talk about sports I care about on The Drive. This is ESPN Blackburn, where sports rule.